Good morning, everyone. It's Chrissy from Solstice ATR. I hope everybody's doing great on a Sunday morning. This video will be covering the coming week in the stock market. Before we do, we use our own adaptive algorithm for trading. Remember that. Um, for side market, up market, and down market. We have some good news coming out in the restructuring of Solstice, ATR, as well as Vulcan. We use this adaptive algorithm once again for illustration, use, and education. We're not a broker dealer. Our past performance doesn't give us any indication of our future results. Use at your own risk. And remember, the data may not be copied unless you got permission from us. You can check the website policy as well as giving us a call. This video, once again, you like it, subscribe, put your comments, share with your friend, and let us know what we can do to help you out whether it's the long-term, short-term, or mid-term. Let's go to the first slide. And what I want to do in this slide is cover some of the sectors that happened in the last couple of weeks since the beginning of the year. The tech sector in the overall charts telling us it represents in favor, whether it's going to be bullish or bearish. We have to pay attention to the Federal Reserve Board in relationship to interest rates, inflation, as well as employment. Um, on the futures, we're going to cover some of the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, especially gold, uh, the Dow Joe, industrial average in relationship to the bank sector, the American dollar, as well as the VIX. Um, secondly, we have some ETFs. I've covered some of the ETFs in the overall sectors of the 13 different sectors in the S&P, but I did not put all of them. I want to pay attention to the New York Composite, the DAX as well as, you know, the XLP, uh, as well as, you, you know, understanding RSB, VEA, the global markets. Most importantly, understanding what the stocks have done on the earning report, what have done well, what haven't done well, what are the outlook for the next quarter for the, from now till end of March and the following quarter in summer. So remember, you can take a snapshot of this slide to give you an overall view in the coming weeks how you can pick the sectors. This is the weekly sectors on the S&P. We got the information technology, consumer discretionary, uh, communication services, healthcare, financial, consumer staples, energy, industrial, material, utilities, as well as, you know, uh, uh, real estate. What I want to do here, like in the REIT, if you don't know how to look at REIT, you can go to EXRE, take a look at the real estate material. You can look at the uh, industrial such as Boeing, Caterpillar, Lockheed Martin, you know, uh, the electronically traded funds, GLD is gold, XLK technology, XLU, XLV is the healthcare sector, XLY, and so on. Um, in the in the oil sector or energy, Exxon, Chevron, Valero, Devon Energy, and so on. X O X Y. In the healthcare sector, Johnson Johnson, Lilly, Merck, uh, Guild, A B B V, and so on. C V X. You know that uh, where distribution are Amazon, Baba. You know in the in the Asian market, Home Depot, Tesla, Ford, General Motor, and so on. Nike. Sony, in the banking sector, J.P. Morgan, American Express, Blackstone, Schwab, Goldman Sachs, City, and so on. Um, Google, and this is in the communication sector. You got Verizon, AT&T, Netflix, Disney, Baidu. Um, in the technology sector, you got Apple, Microsoft, NVDA, Texas Instruments. Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and so on, IBM. So these are the sectors that you want to watch every week. Pick from each sector two, three companies if you want to trade equities. If you want to trade ETFs, you can go take a look at the S&P 500. Pick the 13 sectors that you want, which is right in this area. So it'll help you out in the long term. So you don't have a bias. You got a pool of those investments instead of one individual stocks. Let's go to last but not least. I want everyone to remember. Hit the smash button, give us the like, give us your comments. And if you like this video, 
subscribe to YouTube. It's weekly free for the outlook of the market. Let's go for the first slide. We're going to remove this out of the way. And what I want to do here on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Dow, I put this ribbon. I did this in 2022. I put it a couple of times and I showed these ovals before the market got the reset. And what I want to do here is just consolidate this area from the February 19th, uh, the 17th high with the February 19th gap to the March 23rd. This was the COVID. We had a nice rally. We got consolidation in August, September, October before the December rally. This was our January, February low. We ran high in December from January till December. January 2022 on the 3rd, we looked above and failed. We had a double top here or triple top. It depends which one you're looking at, S&P, NASDAQ, or the Dow. That we fell further down. We got consolidation. We rallied back to the 50 simple moving average and we lost the momentum there. We couldn't make it above the 61.8. We came back to retest the February, the consolidation midpoint of those three instruments, bounced off the 250 simple moving average. We rallied, retested again the 50 three times, and this time we eventually broke up. But there is in this consolidation, I left this fan on on purpose. What I want to do is just show you that there is a battle here going on between the bulls and bears on the weekly chart. I know I have this coloring here. We will remove it. But just give me a minute to explain it. This consolidation here is a battleground. You can see this high is higher than this higher low. And we got higher high from down here, climbing higher. We retested and came back in to close on a doji on those three combinations of those instruments and holding the F5, which is the 50% fit from high to low. And we are holding above the 38. We're sitting on the 50. Do we clear the 61 in order to continue higher or do we reverse back in? We have to pay attention to what the announcements are in the overall market. If I go to the daily chart, I want to make sure that everyone understands this. We're going to go to the daily. There's a lot of consolidation here. We can see that after coming down to the 10, 13, 10, 11, we rallied up, came back down in November, pushed up. December was a look above, trying to get a breakout, couldn't make it. We fell down, consolidated the last week or so. On the last seven, eight days of the market, we closed the year. Then in December, in January, when we opened up on the third, we had an update, came back down, retested that triple bottom. This is very important that we fill the gap. We rallied up, came back, retested, pushed higher. And on the daily chart, we are in a battle zone trying to clear this area. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is the four. If we get clearance, we go higher. We are in a linear regression uptrend. But the fan is getting congested here on the daily chart. So I'm going to remove this fan to show you. It goes from the, the, the dark here. It goes from red to bright color. Then it goes to black here. It goes down. Rallies back up and reverses. And the black disappears. And we get to red. And now we are in consolidation trying to make a change. But we have to pay attention to the overall moving averages. So that ribbon, I'm going to remove it so we make our charts a little bit clearer on the total charting so everyone can understand what we're looking for and where we are at in relationship to those levels. Let's go now. Take a look at the micro ES. And the reason behind I want to show the micro ES on the weekly chart or the daily, we're coming out of a linear regression downtrend this is the first time after testing the 200 SMA. We tested it here in December, couldn't clear it. We cleared it. We cleared the 50 SMA trying to run, but we have a little bit of congestion at the 42.25, 42.12. The real important number we have to pay attention to is 4,109 and a quarter, 4,105. If we stay above it in order to continue up in this trend, or do we reverse back to the F5, F6 before finding a level and coming back higher? So on the weekly chart, if I go back to the weekly, you can see there was a nice consolidation. This is a three-year window showing you the consolidation, the breakout coming back down. If I take this low to this high, we'll show you the 50%. What I want to do is show both of them and remove them to show you why we got this technical bounce. 
if you notice when we came back to this area, we retested the consolidation of here, came back to the 50%, bounced off and continued higher. Ever since then, we reset in December, but we're trying to create a shoulder. If this is the head of it or the cup, this is the handle on the weekly. Do we continue or do we fail at the 116 and retest the 50 in the backside of this channel? This week is going to be a very important week in the coming weeks. So this is very important. So you know the differences. I'm going to remove this, but I want to show you how things, um, what we can do is just reallocate this level. Oops, I made a mistake. Okay, here we go. Activate or I can activate it. Activate the drawing. What we can do, grab this drawing and bring it down to the slow. And usually the 50, if you can see on the weekly or the daily, the high and low, now the 50%, instead of acting support on that three year range, the 50 was support. Now it shows 50 as resistance. We tested it, looked above and failed. Does the 116 simple moving average give us a breakout and the 50 going to F6 and eventually the 78.2 to the 100? Or do we retrieve back? on the charts. This is why I wanted to show this. It's kind of give you a little bit of an overall view of the total charts. From here, I'm going to rush through it. If you have questions, please let us know. Let's go now. Take a look at uh, from here. We're going to zoom it back down to a five year window. We're going to do this one by one. We go five years so everybody can get a better view of everything. We're going to zoom back down. We got rid of the Fibonacci. Now we're going to go to the Dow, which was the component that was weak in the market micro YM. And the reason why I'm putting micro YM up there, I don't have much fibs except channels on it. And what I wanted to show is the annual low from three years ago to the high, which you can see the anchoring was in the prior year. But right now, this anchoring have to be readjusted so we can reactivate this drawing, activate the drawing, grab this and grab it to the high. And you can see the component or the down on the weekly after we coming back to this area of consolidation, August, September, you know, the November push high, we retested this area and bounced off it. The Dow was very strong, but now the Dow is acting as a outlier or just not giving us any hints of any movement because the last two, three weeks, you can see the consolidation. It pushed up, came back in, pushed up. And this week, after pushing up, it came back in. It closed a little bit on the weak side. Does this mean, you know, that point three, that point four three, that or that point three, or that point half a percent is telling us something about the Dow Jones Industrial Average compared to the small cap, or compared uh, to the uh, S and P five hundred or the Nasdaq? So this is very important because you can see from the December. Ever since the December, January, we've been range bound. We haven't been able to break, let's call it the 34,500 until I see the 34,500 breakout and pushing up or coming back in the range of 33,400, 33,200 would be some kind of a support because this was a major, you know, resistance. This was consolidating for a couple of, you know, 10, 15 days, broke up, came back, retest, broke up. We couldn't clear this candle or this candle that we fell from. This is very important. We are in this consolidation. I can see there's an uptrend here. You can draw a channel or a, a pitchfork or whatever you want to call it. You can do it either way or a fan. So what I want to do is use a linear regression channel. You connect this dot here to this high here and you can duplicate this or do another one from down here to this candle here or this one, we, we can see we are in a linear regression uptrend, but we have a 50% that we lost. And if I duplicate this and move it to the upside, you can go duplicate and move this to the upside. We know where our 50% is in relationship to this trend. Until we clear this 50% coming back up, I would be worried about the Dow not being able to consistently continue because it doesn't represent the overall market, but it, it represents some of it. What I want to do, remove these and go fast with the other stuff. So these are the two major events I wanted to cover as well as the DXY. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to put the DXY, the dollar sign, DXY, which is the American dollar. And what I wanted to do, go on the weekly to show something here. We, we came back from an annual high. If I go to a weekly chart, 
three year or five year, you can see that big rally from 2022, the dollar got very strong. It went all the way up, came back, broke through the 50, came back down here. The, the DXY is acting as an instrument trying to make a reversal because it may have found support if you draw it from low to high or high to low the 38.2 usually act at 61 or the, the 61.8 act at 38 we are away from the 50 we're still in a downtrend do they really want to come back and retest the 105 or do we continue lower so we got to pay attention to the dollar it is in a week but it had a nice reversal this week on the weekly bar pushing up but it is still in a downtrend channel but i wanted to mention that to everybody to pay attention to it because on the daily chart what has happened here we still have this consolidation here that we have to clear but on the daily it is in a linear regression downtrend we can see that but every time it tested the low bounced off came back to the low bounced off does this mean it wants to retest the 50 simple moving average in the back side of this channel or does it fail back here and fall back in the range to the bottom of the other side of the channel pay attention to the dollar and what i want to do in the commodity i want to show you the AUD slash usd so this will give you a little bit more hint on these movements and you can see there's the divergence here between the american dollar the australian dollar or the european market we can see we were trying to rally up to get the clearance here and eventually the aussie dollar fell down and here's a little hint here i want to show the gld which is the etf fund oops which is the ETF fund for GC. And the reason behind it, I wanted to show we filled this gap. We consolidated for a while. We were trying to get another breakout to clear this second gap here. You can see there's a little gap here. Usually I mark them. Sometimes I put them on. Sometimes I don't put them on. You can see that there's a professional gap here as well. And even if I go edit the property and I'll extend this, let's say till 2023. And you can see um, we can do it till the january so everybody can see that we came back but we have not tested the second gap if this is a gap and we have one down here do we find support here at the 50 simple moving average and the consolidation of these bars where there was a lot of congestion and we got that breakout consolidate breakout are we going to come back retest this breakout here with a 50 simple moving average and that pivot is between 170 50 170 all the way to 175 do we reverse back up and fill this gap important gold is on my eyes we took a position in gc on that dump to see if we're going to get a reverse back up due to the dollar divergence i'm not telling anyone to buy i'm just giving you the education behind it so that's gld let's take a look at now um uh, btc which is Bitcoin. And I wanted to go over Bitcoin a little bit on the daily as well as the weekly chart. I want to go first to the weekly and come back to the daily. So what we can do is up here, go from the daily time frame. We can go five years back from daily. We go to the weekly chart. And on the weekly chart, we can see that consolidation when it did that 13, 14,000, that 17,300 was an area of a breakout. That, that gap was filled. You can see it when we rallied. We rallied up, came back down, and this is the fill of this gap. You can see it here. If I put my mouse, this candle took it out. We fell down, tried to rally. We were coming out of a wedge. You can see this is a wedge right here. We're coming wide out of a wedge. Let's zoom in before the gaps. We can see that this wedge, and I said to everybody, please, please pay attention to 17,230. If this is going to go, we're looking for that 18,000. 919,000 and eventually it broke up and it gave us a nice push up towards the 25,000. We have not cleared it. This is a gap down. We have this gap up on the weekly. It looks strong. It may consolidate and come back halfway. If it does come back in this area, that's a good territory to buy. And if you get a breakout of the 200 SMA on the weekly and the 50 SMA, I think this gap will be eventually fill in the second one. So let's go to the daily chart now, one year, and let's zoom back down on BTC. 
and I want to show this area from here, this gap here, we know it. This is a major resistance here because it's consolidated for about three weeks. If I zoom in this area, leave the other gap out, I want to make sure that this consolidation here where we're trying to wedge up, we fell down, tried to look back up, couldn't make it, fell back down. So this area is very important to hold for BTC and the 200 SMA and the 18 catching up on that push up. We don't want to come back to this gap. We want to see if we can consolidate get around the, the side base to break up and continue to fill this gap up here and we'll find probably resistance in this area on BTC you can use GBTC which is the ETF in Ethereum ETH or you can use the ETHE for the electronically traded fund you can take a look at Mara you can take a look at coin this is some of the examples I'm trying to give you to look for opportunities. Now let's go take a look at some ETFs, NYA. And I want to go back to NYA on the weekly. These I'll run them through the weekly. We're going to go time frame. We're going to do five here, weekly charts. And what we want to do is on the weekly, we can see that I put the annual Fibonacci from the prior year high to the prior year loan i extended it to the left we refilled this gap in the in the february night this was the push up this was another gap that we retested you can see we tested a portion of it but we didn't fill except 100 percent of it when we came back to the candle. you can see that this candle low was 78.56 and this candle low high was uh uh, 12,535.93. And this is coming back to it. This was a nice fill of that gap. We pushed up. This, we didn't ever tested the 50 SMA here on the weekly till this area here in December. We were trying to break out. We failed. We got support at the 18 simple moving average and uh, F3, which acts like F6 or F6. It depends how you draw from top to bottom or, uh, Usually when we're coming down, we draw from top to bottom. From When we're going up, we draw from bottom to top on the Fibonacci. So those two numbers will be inverted. The 61 becomes 38 and the 38 becomes 61. And this is why you see F3 here, F5 and F6 is holding us by a hairline. So the most important thing, we pay attention to the 116, the 50 SMA and the 18. If we get If we end up losing it, we look for opportunity to buy this zone going back up. So that's, that's NYA. Let's take a look at the VEA, which is the global markets uh, ETF for the merging markets. We can see I have the Fibonacci here from the annual high to the low. We are above the 50 testing, the 61.8. But this candle here on the weekly was a doji. I have to be careful of it because we never cleared the 116 or the 47.90 cents in VEA. Let's take a look at RSP. We can see RSP where we are in relationship to the Fibonacci had a nice strength coming back up. Let's take a look at JNK. We can see in JNK, this was consolidation. We have never tested the bond market since, you know, if you look at it, since this area here, I'll just mark it and remove it. Oops. This area, the 50 and the 18, we fell down. We tested the 18, looked above, failed tested the 18 now the 5 and 18 are crossing in the uptrend but we need to pay attention to the 18 sma i mean the 50 sma does it act as resistance to bring us back halfway or two-thirds of the move before continuing higher this is part of the bond market let's take a look at now zf which is in the bond sector this is a short uh a bond five-year treasury note because i am paying attention to this if this is going to be inverse relationship to the overall interest rates and what i want to do is do tbt oops tbt and we can see that tbt on the weekly chart found some support you remember this is a five here and uh, came up came back in after the retest tried to rally fell back down that 50 simple moving average so far and the f5 which is the 50 percent acting as support the most important thing we have to pay attention to this level 
in case interest rates are going to spike back up and this thing goes back in the $30 range because we may get a 25 or 50 basis points still from the Federal Reserve Board if they think inflation is still need to bring it a little bit more down. We're starting to see that there is a relief, but we have to pay attention to it. Let's go now to crude oil. G, I mean, CL, micro CL. And I want to do the micro CL because it's a cleaner chart because the other one has a lot of noise on it. Micro CL. And we can see on the weekly chart that crude oil, after that double top fell down, tried to rally in the wedge, didn't make it. We have another wedge here, tried to push up. And this week's candle was a bearish candle. I am paying attention to this area here. If it loses the 70, I would look for the backside of the 62, 65 area to see if there's any support for coming back up in crude oil. These two levels are no longer valid after the push up. They acted as resistance. We can draw a channel from here instead of a box. I'll show this here. We can do a channel, draw it this way, and you can see where the breakdown happened in that symmetrical triangle diamond. And here we have a channel from here to here. We have to pay attention to it in case we retest this wedge and come back all the way down. Or do we find support at the 38.2 going back up in crude oil? Let's go now one more time to uh, to GLD. I want to go back to GLD and show it again. This is the gold. And this is the reason why on the weekly I show it. Or you can use the micro GC. And it will show you a similar situation after that push up. We failed. Do we find support in this area? In this consolidate, this was the breakdown. Look above, fail, retest, come back in, breakout, come back in, retest, retest, breakout. Does this act as support for a bounce back up? I know we called the 1878. 1888 in the group we're trying to see if there's going to be a rebound or it's going to be all the way back to around the 52 48 area coming back up in crude because it can i mean gold can make a cup and handle to continue higher that's in gc, GC or micro gc or gld or gold and you can go on and so forth let's go right now take a look at some equities we're going to look at aapl we can see Apple came out very strong after the earning report and after what they paid in dividend. We can see it pushed up to retest on the annual chart. This was, if you can see, this was the prior year Fibonacci, which was this slow here. Instead of this slow, this anchored is a little bit off. So we got to fix this anchoring. I just realized it. This isn't the low. This is the, the low in Apple. We're going to re-anchor it, activate this joint. We're going to do activate. Activate. So we're going to adjust this back down all the way to the scandal so we can have the Fibonacci done correctly. And we can see if I zoom in here, the 50 SMA now acting as the Fibonacci resistance. It has to stay above it in order to continue, in order to run to F6, which is the 30, 61.8. If Apple comes back and creates a shoulder, there's an opportunity around the 145, 147, 50, 145 area for a bounce back up to continue and clear the backside of this linear regression downtrend that we are in. If I duplicate this channel and I grab it, let's say I duplicate the drawing and I do grab this channel, where is my 50% that I have to watch? It's somewhere in this area and this usually acts as support between these two linear regression channels. Let's go now take a look at the Amazon. Amazon was weak. You can see it came back. Oh, I got a bad drawing here. We have to remove it, edit the property, remove drawing. Okay, you can see Amazon had an inverted hammer. Let's take a look at Microsoft. We can see Microsoft is still strong. Tested the 50 SMA breakdown of that linear regression downtrend channel. Does it hold or does the 50 SMA and the 116 act as resistance and F3, which is a 38.2 FIB? Let's take a look at uh, Google L. I'm doing the weekly just to make sure uh, everyone understand. You can see Google the same situation in that linear regression channel. It pushed up on that weekly bar tested the downtrend channel, missed the 50 and fell back in and missed the 38.2. Pay attention if it creates a shoulder here or do we get a breakout? Because if I use Google without that, you remember there's the A and the B when they did it. You can see that it tested it and came back down here. I don't have much Fibonacci's other than those levels. 
Let's now go take a look at uh, Tesla. You can see what it did. We can take a look at ExxonMobil. We can see what it did. You can take a look at Caterpillar. Oops, C-A-T. We can see how well it did in that. It's coming back down after the push-up and the earning report. Take a look at uh, LMT is in a similar situation in consolidation. Let's take a look at Blackstone BX. I do have some fibs on it. I'm sorry, I have to remove those fibs. Sometimes I have them on and I just don't pay attention to removing them. Um, we can see that the rally came back to retest the 50 SMA. We tested it once, twice, three times. The fourth time when usually it tests, it's usually a breakout, but I want you to pay attention that we tested and failed on it on the weekly BX. Let's take a look at uh, General Motor or Ford. General Motor did a little bit better. It cleared that channel, but if I take a look at Ford, look what Ford did. It looked up and it failed. The $12 range in Ford in 11.57 has to hold in order to continue higher or fall due to the distribution similar to Tesla has a little bit of issues on the distribution side of the steel industry as well as the technology. Let's take a look at right now um, two ETFs. What I want to do, take a look at the XLF, the financial sector. We can see it is trying to get back up during that. That's the, sh that's the cop, that's the handle. Is this going to break out or fail back to the backside of the channel? XLE, you can see where we are, XLP. XLU. I'm going in fast so that way you can review the, those levels and the sectors you are in. XLRE in the real estate. We can see that the real estate rallied, broke out of that linear regression downtrend, pushed up, tested the above the 38.2. This is a very important area that $40, 39.75 has to act as support. If it fails, be careful of it. It'll come back to the backside of this channel. If it bounces, it clears this. You look for the F5, the breakdown of this candle getting back to this gap right here. That would be a great target in the future in the real estate. So let's take a look at uh, um, BA, Boeing. You can see after that nice rally that we called up in this area here and the push between this linear regression channel, I said pay attention to this one. If we clear, we go to the major one here on the weekly. We pushed up and now we are in consolidation and Boeing can may come back all the way to the backside of this channel. If it does, this is a great opportunity where the consolidation is and the breakout are in Boeing to add to your position to look for more opportunity in Boeing. This is why I have this Fibonacci up, so everyone knows why we did this. We have the annual high for the year to the annual low here. This is part of the Fib. If I do three-year or five-year outlook, the Fibs will look a little bit much different on Boeing. Let's go right now, take a look at uh, the NASDAQ QQQ. You can see that they were, the NASDAQ had very nice strength in it. It retested the 38.2 but failed at 310. Does it mean we lose the 50 SMA coming back to here before the consolidation and breakout or do we continue higher? Let's see what next week holds. Let's go back right now to the uh, RUT and I want to use the RUT instead of RUT, the small cap, to show that there was strength in it because if I take the low, to the high here on this Fibonacci. I want to show where the areas are or the measured move. So that way we know where our 50%. You can see that 50% after retest a couple of times, eventually we broke up. We are between the 50 and the 100 right now. If I take the prior year range, if I remove this or we keep this in gray color, let's do this at the property. We'll move it back to, I mean, we'll move it back two years. Uh, let's go to 18 so we can have a better level. We'll color this gray so everyone can see it across the board. When it came to this consolidation here in 2018, this is the 19 and the 20 fell down breakout, retested the green box of the ADX, went through, came back up. But what's the issue? We have this annual high here to this low here, correct? So we are testing the 50 Fibonacci. Does this mean it acts as support to continue up to get back to the 61.8 or do we fail coming back in? So pay attention to small cap. It's going to be the canary in the coal mine to give you a little bit of ideas how to do this. If this video was helpful, please let us know. Give us your comments. Take care. 
over and out 